Hey everybody, this is Mr. Z, and this is one more episode of Mr. Z on TV. Now, I've been doing a couple of screencasts lately to help you out with some of this physics stuff, and for those of you that know me know I'm not particularly fond of cats, although should never, never, never uh, harm another animal uh, for you know, just entertainment purposes, that's for sure. So, anyway, we're going to take a look at this skydiving cat who unfortunately does have a parachute. And in this particular case, we're looking at acceleration. Last time, we looked at velocity. Now, velocity is the speed and direction of an object. It's basically, it's the speed, but it happens in a straight line. So we call it a vector quantity. Now, vector is the name of the dude from Despicable Me, for those of you that have seen it. And that he keeps saying that he is, has uh, committing crimes with direction and magnitude. Well, direction is a key component to vectors. Magnitude just means an amount. So, we got this cat here. It's going to skydive, and we're going to check out its acceleration. Okay, so first of all, a couple quick definitions. These are all the same thing, just written different ways. Any change to the motion of an object, that's an acceleration. Acceleration is... A change to the velocity, okay, so either the speed or the direction, which you can see in the bottom one down there, and also that velocity is expressed in, and I'm going to snag this with the little guy right here, meters per second per second, but that's really not the way most people write it. Most people write it like this, meters per second squared, and what it really means is you can see the meters per second part right there, that's a speed or velocity, and then this last one is time another second. So since you have two of those seconds there, the easier way to write it is meter per second squared. Now for those of you that are really, really curious as to why that is, I'll show it to you in some basic fractions. If I took one half, okay, like 50 cents, it's half of a dollar, and I wanted to know what half of that was, most of you would say, well, duh, that's a quarter. Okay, well, what's a quarter is one-fourth. So there's a principle in math that 1 over 2, or whenever you have two denominators that are the same, you can simplify it and tell me that 1 fourth is the same as 1 over 2 squared, because 2 squared is 4. So using letters instead of numbers, if we took meters, okay, and we divided it by seconds, and then seconds again, since we're doing it twice, we just write meters divided by, or per, that slash, seconds squared. So that's kind of how that works. Um, that is the point of all that. Let me get rid of that stuff for you. And then the last one says acceleration can mean a change to the speed or the direction of motion. So when we're talking about acceleration, we're talking about something that requires a force. And in this case, that's a push or pull. And we're really looking at not just any force, but one that is unbalanced. All right? So an unbalanced force does not have something pressing or pushing or pulling in the opposite direction with equal magnitude or strength. So an unbalanced force is what's going to cause acceleration. Okay, so here's Captain Kitty uh, getting ready to be affected by gravity. Now, gravity is what's going to pull that cat to the ground, um, but we're going to start with this sort of story from the beginning. This cat was originally in some sort of uh, aircraft, probably an airplane. So, his initial, which means starting velocity, was zero. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Was zero. Come on. Give me my pen here. There we go. Zero meters per second. Okay? And that would be down. That's why the big red arrow's over there. Now, some of you are arguing with me, but wait a minute. The plane is moving. Yes, you're right. But it's not moving in the direction of the cat's motion that we're going to be investigating. So the forward motion of the plane generates something called lift. And lift is what's balancing or canceling out gravity, and that's why the cat's not falling, and that's why the plane's not falling, and that's a good thing for you and me. So, zero meters per second is the cat's initial or starting velocity. You know, like your first letter of your name is called your initial because it's what starts your name. Well, let's say this cat's going to fall for, let's give him five seconds of free fall. That's just enough to terrify him to death. And then uh, the before that, we've got final velocity. So, like, the cat's going to go for five seconds. How fast is he going to be going after that? Let's pick an easy number to work with. 50 
meters per second, and it's down. So to figure it out, here's our formula. We take our velocity final, VF, and we subtract, that looks like divide, or multiply, velocity initial, and then we put that all over time. So you're going to hear me say this a lot. We will use a formula, then we substitute, then we solve. So <clears throat> now let's substitute. The cat's final velocity after all this force and acceleration is done is going to be 50 meters per second. And we're going to subtract from that. Oops, I'm running out of room. 0 meters per second. Sorry that I can't squeeze in my, yeah, I'll try, my units here. 50 minus 0, and that's all going to be over 5 seconds. Okay, so the cat... Um, final velocity 50 minus 0 is 50 again. So now I'm going to simplify 50 meters per second. And I'm going to divide that by 5 seconds. And that's going to give us 10 meters per second squared. Remember we had to do that dealio with the squares. So what does that mean? That means every second that the cat falls out of that plane once it's out, its speed, see the meters per second right there, is going to go up by 10 meters per second every second. So after one second, it'd be 10, 220, 330, 440, and five, that's what we have right here, 50 meters per second, that's our final velocity. So that's the dealio with our cat as it jumps out of the plane, okay? That's a positive acceleration, which means the speed is increasing. Okay, on to scenario number two. Now, let's say our cat is moving 50 meters per second, 5, 0 meters per second, and that's down again. And this time, the cat pulls the little ripcord, I think it's right there, the lollipop, so to speak, and out of his back pops up, yes, yes, I know, the parachute. And I'm not a very good artist, so there we go. Parachute pops up. And what happens is the cat rapidly begins to decelerate. What does that mean? It means slow down. That's the point. So the cat's not going to slow down to zero because that would mean he just stop right where he was. He's going to still fall, but he's not going to fall as fast so that when he hits the ground, well, he doesn't use up all nine of those lives. So let's take a look at final velocity. Let's say a safe one might be five meters per second. That's still pretty hard to hit the ground, but it's something that you probably could handle. So let's say, because parachutes work really quick, that that change happens in two seconds. Okay, it's probably actually faster than that. But in order to figure it out, we do the same thing. We take our velocity final minus our velocity initial, and we divide by the time. So let's substitute, and I'm going to keep working my way down here. The final velocity in this case is 5 meters per second, and I'm going to subtract... 50 meters per second, and I'm going to divide that by two seconds. Now, you might be saying, hey, we can't do that. Yes, you can. It's just going to be negative. So we're going to end up with negative, I'll move up here, negative 45 meters per second divided by two seconds. Well, we're just going to do this math exactly as if it were not a negative number. So, negative 4, uh, 45, just, let's just treat it like 45. 45 divided by 2 is 22 and a half meters per second squared. But it's negative 45, so we're just going to make our answer negative. So, uh, I'm running out of space here. Let me get rid of the parachute. Not that that makes me very happy. <laughs> All right, so there it goes. And let me go back. Now, so negative 22.5 meters per second squared. What does that mean? Well, it means that, see that it's negative there. This negative means that it's going to be decreasing our speed, our velocity, by this much every second, okay? So if we started off at 50 meters per second, one second later, the cat the cat speed would go down by 22.5 meters per second squared. So it would end up at 27.5 meters per second. Then it's going to go down again by 22.5, and, and it's going to end up at 5 meters per second, but that's only going to take two seconds. So whenever we see a negative acceleration, we know something is slowing down because negative means decreasing. So what do we call that? We call this deceleration. 
Okay, now here's the dealio. Most people, oops, there's my O. Most people, when they hear the word acceleration, they say, oh, it means speeding up. It doesn't. It means any of the changes. So it could mean a positive or a negative change. If it's negative, we call it deceleration. Okay, but it's still a type of acceleration because all accelerations simply mean a change to the velocity. So if the velocity goes from one number to another, we're accelerating. And what does that take? It takes an unbalanced force. So acceleration, velocity final minus velocity initial all over time. And all that is is a change in the uh, forces that act on an object. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you got that all nailed down. That's acceleration. I'll be back next time. I think we're going to look at Newton's second law, which is the relationship of the force to its mass and the acceleration all in the same uh, ball of wax. So... Cool. Um, do your homework. Later.